Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining this panel discussion. Special thanks to our panelists as well as the Sankalp Summit team for giving us this opportunity. Today we have uh, an amazing and a very experienced panel uh, with business leaders coming from across the sectors who have joined us to share their insights on the role of businesses in accelerating the SDGs for the children of India. I will be the moderator for the panel. And we have with us Kanika Pal from Unilever, NSN Murthy from Deloitte, Santosh Kumar from Booking.com, and Medha Nanda from RP Apart. So the panel discussion will provide an opportunity to harness the voices of business leaders, which can effectively drive companies in India to act in support of SDGs for every child, to reimagine the future of businesses highlight their solutions and amplify their voices to create a more equal, just and sustainable India. India, home to one sixth of all humanity, holds the key to the success of the 2030 agenda. India has made a paradigm shift to a whole of society approach with the government of India engaging national, subnational, local governments, civil society organizations, local communities, people in vulnerable situations, and the private sector. All of the sustainable development goals for 2030 affect children's lives in some way. And UNICEF's ambitious aims for health, education, poverty reduction have been developed to support the realization of the SDGs. India will play a leading role in determining the relative success or failure of these SDGs. The government is leading efforts towards realizing the SDGs for children, but they cannot do it alone. The businesses have enormous power to improve children's lives, coupled with the fact that the interests of children and businesses are inextricably linked. Resilient and sustainable societies and business environments are only possible if children's rights are protected and promoted. We have an opportunity to shift the paradigm for, for children by working with businesses in more strategic ways than ever before. Responsible businesses that are investing in children's rights to health, nutrition, education, and protection are investing in their future, a safer and more sustainable future. Businesses can develop competitively advantageous partnerships around these goals to achieve impact at scale and demonstrate their commitment to connecting their success with social progress to their consumers, employees, and investors. By leveraging the power of a company's resources, consumers, expertise, and innovation, businesses are fulfilling their responsibility to the SDGs in their broadest sense and securing the opportunity to grow sustainably. <laughs> so let me begin by introducing each speaker, and I'll ask them to make opening remarks. After all the speakers have spoken, I will ask any follow-up questions, and then we will move to the audience for asking any questions. In the meantime, I request all of you to please feel free to put your questions in the chat. Let me begin with the NSN. NSN, I would like to introduce you as the consulting leader for government and public services at Deloitte. And you have over 22 years of experience across a range of sectors. So what do you think is the role of businesses in accelerating the SDGs for children of India? Over to you, NSA. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul. And uh, thank you, the Sankal team, for having me here. Uh, I think it's a very, very pertinent question, uh, uh, Rahul. And in fact, the, the most important stuff that we should we should all as businesses, we, we understand and we believe also. It's not just I'm talking on behalf of Deloitte, but for the business. I think without a purpose uh, or a business, businesses cannot survive. So the business and the purpose for future is extremely interconnected. So let me actually, uh, so, so let me try and rephrase into uh, how do we connect this? So children, for example, so it's not about charity. It's not about how do we actually uh, put the CSR funding and also those are, those are very well intended things that continue to happen. But from a business standpoint, for the purpose, I, I, I'll give three small, small examples for businesses. 
children are actually part of their employee well-being so if i look at the sdg goal of uh, health and well-being having a very a, a, a kind of a initiatives which business can take to make sure that the environment for children is much more protective it's healthy it's it's safe and secure it actually creates the employment employee engagement okay so i'm just trying to look at from a business standpoint not from only from csr it actually creates a a lot of uh, stickiness towards that employer and the employee because you are actually taking care of someone who's very precious to you okay so that's part one so part two is the businesses are fed or run through the skills of going to be future if you don't take care of the quality of education and the kind of uh, skills behavioral and leadership uh, and as well as the technical in the children of today you will not be able to create the future emerging workforce which is going to be completely different the gen z of today is completely different from the even the millennials right so so the investment of the businesses is much more i'm 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 taking the kind of a a value based purpose and all the say i know my colleagues will speak about it i want to actually and see that why it is also important pertinent for the businesses to focus on children besides the csr engagement and stuff it's it's because it's for their own growth for their own purposes for their own uh, stickiness towards employee engagement so i'll i'll take a pause here i think i wanted to share a little bit of a a different perspective on the on businesses connecting with the children thank you so much uh, anison uh, really interesting what you shared next i'll move to kanika who is an award winning csr and sustainability professional with over 17 years of experience and presently heading community investments and sustainability programs for unilever in south asia what do you think kanika of the role of fmcg companies in accelerating the sdgs for children of india thanks rahul and uh, thanks so much to uh, intellicap and the entire sankalp team for having me here um you know honestly speaking if i just take a step back and as a sustainability professional we're used to just viewing things holistically um and not being marked by uh, you know the sector or the stakeholder per se but looking at viewing things systematically and systemically i think the very role of business first is to is to be responsible and sustainable as simple as that because if you're not and it could be fmcg it could be any business if the business itself is not responsible and sustainable obviously you're going to use more resources obviously your consumption is going to be high obviously your growth is not going to leave a positive footprint on the planet and for the social fabric of the country of the globe and that itself has a long lasting impact which is negative for children so i think the first thing the elephant in the room is that businesses just have to have a lens of sustainability in each and everything that they do that's the first role for accelerating sdgs um closer home coming to unilever and the role that we play in accelerating sdgs we have compass strategy which is the unilever's strategy which is articulated globally which very clearly defines the business's role in actually fulfilling its environmental and social commitments and this is not csr sustainability is embedded in the very make of unilever's business so whether we are producing products that have a higher um, you know positive impact on the environment with lower carbon footprint or lower water footprint or whether it is making products which are needed for the society to be able to live sustainably which is our purpose as a business is the very make of uh, the way unilever functions from a very community investment standpoint i think when we look at communities children play a very vital role with all the stakeholder engagements that we have and then we end up looking at it from a holistic lens of what happens when the child is not born and he's in the womb of the mother how can we make sure that it gives a fulfilling environment for that pregnant woman a lactating woman to a mother um, who ends up actually having that child as a child under 5 uh, we work on the nutrition aspect of children we work with children holistically even when it comes to anganwadis the early care that comes to uh, children through 
not just construction and maintenance of anganwadi but also ensuring that there are nutri gardens which are provided which become the first source of nutrition there is also a whole lot of work that we do with adolescent girl child right which is again on hygiene and unilever being an fncg company has products which are on hygiene but the importance of hygiene for better health practices for children in general becomes very very critical which then gets married also with when a woman grows from being an adolescent to a woman you know who's probably having a greater influence on the community and what are the options of livelihood for her so that she can provide better for the children who are yet to be born and the future generations as well in this entire ambit we are looking at health and nutrition we are looking at environment we are looking at livelihood and also the need which keep on emerging with climate change for example with uh, you know absolute havoc that climate change wrecks is the drinking water availability that's there uh, is the sufficiency of water that's there does that impact sdg 3 which is on health and well being does that impact uh, you know sdg 6 which is on hygiene and water you know so on and so forth so particularly from our standpoint i think first bucket doing business running business responsibly having a sustainability lens second bar- bucket which is providing the right kind of products and services to uh, children that can help them having a better shot at living more uh, sustainably and the third bucket which is our work in the community be it through our brands be it as csr or be it as the value add that we do even as a marketing company which does behavior change to cover the entire ambit of behavior change to advocacy um all in all that provides a better shot for children to be able to have uh, you know sustainable living that further sdg thank you very much and very interesting from what nsm talked about you know business is being purpose driven and how the engagement uh has to be beyond just the csr to what kanika you talked about the kind of life cycle approach and looking at different stages of children even before they are born and those are very critical uh months and how unilever kind of looks at a holistic approach with the uh, community thank you very much kanika beta you started out to be a part a few months back to build a community of artists and support the most vulnerable children of india and i want to quote something you said before inviting you to share your thoughts on how philanthropic initiatives such as uh, art be a part can accelerate the sdgs uh, for the children of india and with just quoting you you said i believe that we are all given unique talents and opportunities to improve situations and circumstances if we all come together to contribute even in a small way we can make a huge difference can you elaborate it further for us please yeah hi rahul i want to thank uh, for thank you for having me on this panel i want to say thank you also to the sankar team and i want to say hello to everyone here uh let me start with another quote which inspired what you said was the quote that i that you quoted me saying so that's a quote by harvard zinn it says we don't need to engage in grand heroic actions to participate in the process of change small actions when multiplied by millions of people can transform the world we are all like you said we are like i said we are all given unique talents we are all given opportunities to help and and work towards a greater good so we at art be a part our community we are we are passionate people we are passionate about art we are passionate about making a difference when all of us come together we can make a much wider impact and i um, mean my business is just something that is started new and i realized i have had three events i realized there's so many people who want to participate who want to make a difference but they don't know how to go about it like in individuals um companies have their csr projects companies are doing their bit but individuals who who want to make a difference are actually looking for ways looking for for things they can do and so when i set up art be a path it was for that it was to give people that opportunity to help in whichever small way they can and the overwhelming response i've got is is amazing because everyone is saying oh how can we help how can we be be make the difference and in fact uh, by supporting unicef we are not only able to raise awareness and raise funds we know that they're going into the right areas we know that 
that what we what we want to do is actually being done and the goals that they have set out we will be a small part of helping them achieve those goals which is what all of, i mean most of us want to do we want to make the difference we'll end up going once we'll end up going twice but to work with an organization that has the means that has the the methods and that has the experience is what is what makes the real difference and what gives us that pride that you know we were we were a small part of that change there is i mean there's so much so much to be done and every little bit from all of us counts and that's why our be a part was set was came together it was to help in every little way and every person who can put in their little bit will make a huge difference thank you meeta and very important part not small part but very important part for the children of india and uh, thank you very much uh, and for us for the panel we thought we have the perspective from businesses but also how individuals can play a very very important and critical role for us to accelerate the achievement of sdgs in india for children thank you that brings me to santosh uh, who heads booking.com in india sri lanka maldives and indonesia and uh, brings with him a decade of leadership experience in the travel and hospitality industry santosh can you share some insights from your experience of working with the travel and hospitality industry in the role of how businesses can play a role in accelerating sdgs for india yeah firstly uh, thank you uh, rahul for having me on and also want to thank the intellicap and sankalp team for inviting me to join in this conversation um you know from a, i think from a travel and tourism perspective right let's you know let's set the context a little bit right travel and tourism today is responsible for roughly 8% of the world's carbon emissions if done with respect for local communities environments and biodiversity travel can really broaden horizons reduce barriers and bring people closer together ultimately and sustainable travel can mean different things to different people and protecting the natural environment isn't always the whole story we must also consider social economic and cultural impact at booking.com specifically um, you know we believe that travel can be a very powerful force for good bringing enhanced cultural understanding socio economic opportunities and also the potential to protect our planet for the future generations and we made it a part of our mission today to make it easier for everyone to experience the world right and as a global leader today in travel with we have close to about 28 plus million listings on our platform we believe that we have a very important responsibility to make sustainable travel choices easier both for our partners and for our customers and ultimately um, you know most people today are seeking authentic cultural experiences that add value back into local communities right we want to travel to off peak destinations people are also traveling outside of peak season and things like that to avoid overcrowding a few months back um, we released our 2022 sustainable travel report um, and um, you know this one specifically diving in from an india perspective over 90% of indian travelers have stated that they want to travel more sustainably over in, in the coming 12 months and they confirm that sustainable travel is important to them while the research indicates that awareness of sustainable stays is clearly growing there is still a lot of work to be done in order to make those sustainable stay options easier for everyone to find and a lot of people today still seem unsure as to how to travel more sustainably highlighting a need for the travel industry to make information transparent and understandable for a broad audience of travelers and this is where also i think rahul um, you know the industry or you know broader context when we talk about enterprises can play a very active and major role to help things turn around right like for example incorporating sustainable practices into their travel policies uh, for their own employees from an industry perspective um, we are leading the way with um, the travelist coalition this is a not for profit organization that's convening a global alliance of leading travel and tourism service providers um the 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 coalition's mission is to make it easier ultimately for travelers and travel providers to make sustainable choices 
we are building together a uniform industry wide sustainability framework that is consistent credible and easy to understand ultimately for both travel providers and consumers and it it's dedicated to exploring um, solutions that will make travel more sustainable through partnerships involving local communities policy makers governments ngos etc so um, so i would say that's really my perspective on this matter rahul thank you santosh and uh, yes definitely i mean when we are looking at sustainable development goals we are looking at sustainable development in a more holistic way and all the different uh, aspects you highlighted are very important and relevant and travel and tourism industry has an important role to play there so thank you so uh, now i'll kind of go into more specific questions now that you know we have introduced the panelists and we have set the context uh, from uh, all the panelists uh, so maybe let me begin by uh, asking a question like let me go back to nsn and uh, nsn given your kind of extensive experience in working on transformation projects how do you think businesses can develop competitively advantageous partnerships around these global goals for children to achieve impact at scale and connect their success with uh, social progress and uh, please feel free to elaborate on uh, you know examples from deloitte or uh, from any other business you feel appropriate thanks <clears throat> thanks rahul uh, okay so let let's let me uh, take a put a consultant hat and actually answer this question a little different so when when we are looking at a so uh, when we are looking at a problem okay so and a and a solution to a problem usually in the past when a tech firm or a technology or a business they look at uh, solving that particular a uh, problem okay so and you create products and you create solutions and you create services around that to do that and 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 the idea is not idea is to do it alone that's and i connect back to the children uh, just in a bit of time so the idea is always the firm wants to do it on its own so because they they want to maximize the amount of outcomes for themselves and for the project or the program okay so but i think in the last 5 uh, odd or 10 odd years uh, the kind of problems that each one of us are witnessing are not something which is a point based solution okay so or a challenge for example i'll take a simplest one and and kanika touched upon it it's very very close to my heart is is about uh, the entire uh, 12 month cycle 9 months of pregnancy and 3 months thereafter so that's 12 months of cycle while we actually uh, from a from a government standpoint and from various things we have actually tried to do a targeted approach on solving one part of the problem okay so let's do this high risk pregnancy let's do this thing anemia let's do this thing iron folate so what happened is actually never created an impact which is throughout the cycle and 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 what is the outcome today almost like 67% of children in the 6 months to a 59 months bracket there they have uh, iron deficiency which started from pre and about 52% pregnant women are actually uh, iron deficient and leading to a high risk pre- so it's actually connected so when we started doing thinking about this we started thinking is there a thematic way in which we can do it and and alone one firm cannot do it okay and and it impacts several things it impacts impacts the children it impacts the pregnant women it impacts the actually the reproductive women also so it need not be a pregnant woman. so it so how do i actually do it so that's where we actually say let's do a ecosystem based approach i can do x for example i can and i can bring the government on the table and explain them how to run the program i can bring a tech player and do a nudge based app or application development which will which will not force them to eat a, a meal on time or, or or so and so forth but will also tell them that if you get something as a, a government of india runs a program called portion which gives a food to the uh, the reproductive women and uh, pregnant women but that food when they bring to the house they actually give it to the man of the house and the children first they don't eat they eat at the end so that means the entire nutrient quotient is gone so what the nudge based approach is to tell them that yes it's good you are doing a very nice thing but you need to take care of yourself first so how do i actually do that 
how do i actually connect them talk to them create a community feeling help them understand bring a, a larger community of uh, women and children together to understand and get the men also into this so the so when we ran this entire pilot in couple of villages near gurgaon even the we found out the even the 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 senior bureaucrats in the in the district administration they were they were, they were actually iron deficient okay so they had anemia so so it was not just the uh, the females and the kids and the uh, child it's also a, so it's a problem so when you empathize as a man also to a, uh, your family person then the connect and everything and it's not a single company so there are multiple people who can so that ecosystem is required so problem of today is cannot be solved by businesses and that's what we have learned it we we cannot solve one problem as an individual firm it will be at least a subset of some five or six plus the government plus educational institute plus others to come in uh, i'll take a very quick stab on the 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 education part of it because it's again very similar. so this was on the healthcare child healthcare and and so but on the education side of it as i said it's important for the businesses to have a much well educated and behaviorally educated uh, the child uh, the children so that the the future of workforce is much better because india cannot fight the manufacturing battle it needs to actually look at manufacturing 4.0 or 5.0 or 6.0 by the time these kids will actually move into the workforce so what we need what as a deloitte we have been doing is we are actually running a program called world class uh, globally but in india we are doing that program for, with the target about uh, impacting about 50 million uh, the women as well as girl child which includes quality education skilling access to education access to various other opportunities when they can actually use the skills and the education so that's the impact. but we can't do it alone so we have actually created an ecosystem of not for profit organizations tech firms uh, and other individuals in fact all the deloitte they actually contribute in this thing so we have put together an ecosystem again focusing uh, the idea is to ensure that it's not just one firm but an ecosystem over a period of time get nurtured and they start taking it as a collective responsibility to develop this entire uh, community and look at those uh, sdg goals at the end of the day how do we actually reflect upon that, them over a period of time great great thank you anis and and very interesting you bring the ecosystem approach uh, so let me that takes me to let me go to santosh now and uh, and santosh i mean you're now leading booking.com in key markets including india working with millions of customers and you said you know millions of hotels in the world but probably thousands of hotels in india how do you think businesses in your ecosystem are or can be proactive and more innovative in fulfilling their responsibility to the sdgs and securing the opportunity to grow sustainability considering the two are interextricably linked yeah uh, so so rahul i can talk about this from our own context right because you know we firmly believe that the the bar that we set for our partners or other businesses in the ecosystem will be no higher than the one that we've set for ourselves to follow first and um, you know i can i can talk about it from the lens of for example our climate strategy you know um, so the climate strategy is today is aligned with the paris agreement and it guides our zero our journey for our own operation by 2030 and net zero by 2040 so we made uh, three commitments on our enterprise wide strategy number one is operating our own business sustainably and building a culture of sustainability so this is leading by example to set uh, carbon reduction targets in line with climate science guidance and also empowering our people to be able to make sustainable choices in their day to day work um so for instance we have already reduced our absolute scope one and two emissions by 92% uh, by uh, transitioning primarily to 100% renewable electricity uh, we're also launching a sustainability awareness program for employees and leadership um number two we want to make it easier for travelers to book sustainable trips so last year we launched um, what we call as the travel sustainable batch to help travelers make more sustainable travel choices so this program features a badge and a filter on all of our platforms 
and it's available to any kind of property whether we are talking about apartments bed and breakfast to you know very large hotels and resorts so we ask them a set of questions in five key areas waste management energy and greenhouse gases water consumption supporting local communities and protecting nature so today um, you know i'm very happy to say that globally we have more than 100000 properties who are being recognized for their efforts in this space with a travel sustainable badge and uh, number 3 finally is collaborating to decarbonize the travel industry right so i mentioned the travelist coalition previously um, where we are playing a very active role in helping change the impact of travel together with our peers um but we are also working to improve partner capabilities to implement decarbonization solutions and accommodations right so especially a lot of um small and medium sized enterprises in the travel and tourism industry are at the very beginning of their net zero journeys and they lack the capabilities and the experience to implement the solutions that are available so um we are continuing to expand our education programs uh, for accommodations to tailor support based on their maturity level and local context so you know i i can take water consumption as an example right uh, to make this a little more real um you know asking guests for example to reuse towels or skip housekeeping is not something new for the hospitality industry but how can we go beyond that right so you know prompting guests to use water conservatively um there's a startup for example that has created a shower head that uses lights to show guests their water usage in real time so this gives them a nudge to get out before they start over consuming another way could be to incentivize guests to a drink or a discount of some sort when they forego a particular service educating housekeeping staff on the importance of conserving water giving guests very clear instructions right for what to do and avoiding very vague messages like go green or save water you know i can go on and on but essentially in the travel industry building a truly sustainable industry will take time coordination and concerted effort but progress is possible if we continue to innovate if we continue to come together um and collaborate within the industry thank you so much santosh and uh, you know great you're taking these initiatives to work with the whole ecosystem um uh, also what is important is to highlight how an individual can make a difference for the marginalized children of india what we were discussing a bit earlier so meda i'll come back to you uh, and how do you think individuals such as yourself can really be champions in co-creating solutions with children and unicef to achieve sdgs in india uh, thank you again rahul i have been listening to nsn and santosh and also kanika earlier i have to say it's amazing the initiatives big companies are taking and all the work that is being done though i do feel individuals like myself can make a can add in a very different way because we are looking at things a little more personally and to reach out in that way working together you guys have these huge projects you are doing and making such a difference but i think the little personal touch can come in from individuals like myself like i had discussed with rahul um, some time when i was planning this how to reach he had told me it, it the first 20 years easy to reach the next uh, 20 is a little harder so i actually wanted to start from the last 20 which is completely dif- completely like difficult to reach and i think to teach them also how to sustain it because how many times can we feed can we feed someone we need to teach them how to eat themselves so i mean i think we from a personal personal um, perspective can have the smaller things that get overlooked and get uh, get sort of uh, you know then the larger picture there's certain children who need extra help who need that extra uh, care so i guess uh, it's easier for for an individual to think in in that way than uh, than and uh, create that uh, that change also i mean i i was listening to uh, what uh, nsn said about about the whole uh, the the uh, what the tanika had started with actually and then nsn started the whole the process of uh, carrying a baby and then you know the 12 months that are needed and i think that that is such a personal thing being a mother being 
somebody who's bringing up children there's so much attention that needs to go into into each thing into the caring phase into the teaching phase and how we teach our own children how to be sustainable how to we teach them how to talk we teach them how to walk we teach them how to eat and then they have to continue and i feel that is what we need to help with i mean obviously i can't do it alone we need all the different sectors to come together and do it together to help these children sustain themselves and grow up knowing that they can use what they have the talents they have to sustain themselves from I mean, me being an artist I, i love to paint but i can use that art for 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 good and i can use that art to sustain myself and i think it's great to be able to reach the children and show them that the the things that they already have because there's so much we don't have and they don't have but what they do have is something that they can use to help themselves and i think um, i am very happy to be able to uh, to help in that in some small way or big way or important way like i would put it but uh, i'm very happy to be able to help in creating that sustainable um living for the children who are really far away and difficult to reach thank you so much meeta and very interesting you i mean the sustainable development goals are absolute goals and they are for for everyone uh, uh, uh you know everyone uh, in the world and for unicef it's about uh, every child and uh, and you talked about kind of it's really it's relatively easy to reach the first 40% children it's more difficult to reach the other 40% but it's really challenging to reach the remaining 20% and those are the ones who mostly get left out and that's where uh, unicef and our partners are really focusing on how do we reach the most marginalized and vulnerable children of india so uh, uh, kanika uh, back to you and you know <coughs> unilever and unicef have been partnering for many years across the countries in the world and given the kind of sustainable business practices of of your company and your work on sustainability projects could you highlight how can corporates build partnerships with the development sector for co-developing and creating solutions that bring us closer to solving the challenges children face and there is a dedicated sdg sdg 17 which really talks about partnerships so correct okay. yeah thanks rahul and i think it's a very important question because uh, as has been already highlighted that you can't work in silos and you you need you can't do everything under the sun and you need specialists essentially to be able to drive home the message um i think for us partnerships have played a key role from not just uh learning but also unlearning perspective and that becomes very important because even when i talk about uh, very specifically programs that you know we are doing with unicef for example um we have a massive program that runs on hand washing which is very important as a habit to teach children um at the same time we have a partnership which we are working on with uh, unicef which is for the school children how to have employable skills when they actually reach the active workforce it Be- becomes very important for them to not be in that pool of poverty um, and to really stand on their own feet um we've also had partnerships and i'm just talking about unicef but i want to broad base it later to other stakeholders as well but just to give a flavor that you know typically uh, one doesn't think about the spectrum of things that we we can do together but even with unicef right now we're talking about how to make drinking water available at door step through tap water uh, with the jal jeevan mission of the government of india uh, in a place like maharashtra right so that's also very important for the children in their growth and development i think when we look at children as a whole and you segmentize as to which each age group what is the requirement that's needed for their own development and then you get the right set of experts to develop co develop the program and deliver that program has been one of the prime important things that we at HUL do so the prabhav program which is essentially the community development program um of HUL has been running the portion sati program with ntu partners with specialists in the life cycle approach of women you know they have helped us to 
unfold how do we also involve the ashas and the anganwadis and the nms in that journey and look at uh, you know uh, nsn you touched on portion but portion abhiyan becomes a very critical part of us portion 2.0 the moment it talks about more of nutri garden how do we engage with players in the ecosystem to be able to develop that with a sustainability angle and not a tick in the box that let's just create nutri garden forget about it you know we have proper impact evaluations as the pre and the post in the portion program of ours itself has shown that through advocacy and right means of behavior change be it demonstrating the right recipes be it making access to nutrition more at home there's been a shift from about 90% of women having early initiation of breastfeeding you know better nutritious practices across um, pregnant women across adolescent girl child so on and so forth similarly with respect to you know when we're looking at waste management i mean india as a country needs hygiene and waste to be spoken about and drilled down in the heads of children we have a waste no more curriculum which is taught in school as part of our in depth advocacy program which is again with undps into and others so essentially for us as an organization whenever we are looking at children we are trying to look at thematic areas that will create a dent on the sdgs be it no poverty be it access to clean drinking water be it access to better health and well being nutrition so that holistically we get the right partners be it from government services be it from civil society be it from organizations like un or be it from impact evaluation because that's where a learning unlearning will really happen we don't want to reinvent the wheel we want to further the mandate that the government has and get more partners to join hands with us um and private sector partnerships in this entire wheel becomes equally important uh to be able to have the resources put in more meaningfully on the ground so that you know there's more synergy coming in from the uh, pool of resources that we are putting in so i think partnerships are the key and partnerships unlock a lot of things that otherwise if we were to do everything on our own by the can we justify it nor would that be the prudent use of this offer great great thank you kanika and uh, you know very interesting you mentioned about private sector being such a critical player in the whole ecosystem and for us to work together and partner together to achieve sdgs and you also highlighted the role of the government and and uh, maybe santosh if i can come to you on uh, you know how for businesses it's really important to collaborate with the governments to drive the sdgs and if you know from booking.com's perspective or from your experience if you have any insights to share uh, how businesses can work with the government to accelerate that yeah you know uh, rahul i'll also put on the hat of a consultant here right similar to what nsn said um you know uh, given my past experience sort of working with governments in the travel space uh firstly we've got to understand that when it comes to accommodations it's very very challenging to standardize right um especially when you're talking about sustainable kind of accommodations because how is a 10 room or a 5 room property in a tier 2 tier 3 tier 3 city in rural india how are they being sustainable versus a um, 500 room mega five star hotel in mumbai let's say right um so very different right um so having one size fits all approach is very very challenging um and that's where i think partnerships collaboration with government with other um you know um associations or tourism bodies like for example the work that global sustainable um tourism council the work that they're doing uh, or the work that green view is doing is very very important right and that's how we are you know especially when it comes to booking.com we have i spoke a little bit earlier about the education that we are giving right um to the to our partners now we have started to actually accept and incorporate other standards and certifications into our own travel sustainable batch program right so that we are able to accommodate a larger set of partners into this program and second we are also able to push that education further down into the consumer um and also i think it's important for travel companies to be able to take a slightly longer term approach when it comes to developing destinations you know um especially we're talking about destination resilience right everything that we've seen in the recent past with climate change with the pandemic etc when you talk about developing destination resilience um you know we are undertaking programs that talk about you know how can we help communities in a particular destination 
in the longer term? How can we look at health and safety aspects? How can we look at the environment? So very holistic approach, I would say, in terms of furthering the uh, SDGs. Thank you, Santosh. And uh, just kind of taking a clue on the work on the work with the government and the critical role which the government plays. And, and I said, I know from our discussion, you do a lot of work with the government as well. Uh, any insights you might have on partnering with the government and how businesses can work with the governments to accelerate SDGs for children in India, or just more broadly? Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's let's uh, uh, let's actually put it in two perspectives, Rahul. One is, I think, from a perspective of government being uh, a facilitator. Okay, so uh, how do you work in which government only facilitates you to uh, do a certain activity? For for example, you don't need a government to run uh, a a lot of programs. You just need them to actually stand on the side and say that uh, these are the things that that enables and and policies is going to help. So. From that perspective, I think if you go to any of the state in the central or the other cities, they're pretty open. Let me take an example. Uh, when we were actually doing, uh, during the wave two of the COVID, uh, we were we realized that the kind of uh, impact, uh, at, while the center was doing extremely good job of uh, uh, doing the vaccination and, and medicines and all those stuff. So that's that's at a, at a war level, at a mission level. But at the ground level, at the district level, it was extremely important for to create a, a kind of a partnership, which in which the government stays as a facilitator, and and the private sector along with the rest of the other ecosystem players, including uh, the various uh, civil societies or not-for-profit organization, everyone together. To support, so what we what we did was we took uh, one uh, district and and it, it actually become a case study under Niti Aayog. Now I'll share the link and everything we, uh, after this session, so I'll send it to everyone. So what we did is we actually took a challenge in saying that why should somebody should come during the the pandemic or the COVID should come to a hospital because hospitals was in wave two if you recall recollect it was they were actually overflowing. So everyone was in hospital and they were not being able to get the right treatment. So the idea was to how do I take the entire care to the doorsteps? Okay. So how do I decrease the burden? And for that, I don't need the government. I need the government to add one or two things. But besides that, I do 10 things which are in the value chain. For example, can I actually add those medicines with the uh, ASHA workers? which are the set of medicines, I give it to them when they're carrying those medicines. Can I actually give them just two, two instruments which were not there as part of the ASHA worker uh, program? One is the thermometer and second is the oximeter. It was, it's not part of their ASHA workers portfolio, right? So if I give them those two equipment and uh, multiple sets of that, whenever they go to a doorstep, they can actually find out who is, who's well, who's unwell and besides that, and, then, and they can give that to the family so that they can check. So again, a little bit of a nudge working with the the, uh, the people and then whole set of supply chain integration with the rest of the partners. So very, very simple, simple stuff. Move that. But if you can then track it on a real-time basis uh, and, and the district that we were working, it's a Karnal district. So the amount, the number of people, we went with a, with a simple one single idea that can I say one single life? That's all. Okay, that was the whole idea when we actually started. So we said, so with that purpose, we started this. But I, let me extend this. The partnerships in future will be based on these kind of impact-based work. Because what the consumer today, and I'm again looking at a business lens also. Again, it's, it's extremely important because they're inseparable. When, when you look at the consumer, they want to look at the human side of the firm. They want to know and they want to see that whether I am actually doing business with purpose for society, for communities, for everyone else. It's not just I'm doing for profits. Okay. So that's not any longer this, whether it is a sustainability, whether it is to do with the with the child welfare or a gender equality or education or healthcare. But I think the <clears throat> the the purpose and the impact-based work uh, is bringing the firms together to work on. That's part. So where the government is only working as a fist, where the government can be actually a consumer of all those things is where the startups are making a change. And we are far off. Okay. So the big companies like us, we are actually behind 
this this entire thing. The startups are far ahead of us. They know how to actually take those data points on on data sets from the ground and create a solution which the government is today consuming. And I can take an example. Uh, and and most of you uh, are are based in North. Uh, start November first or second week, you'll all start facing the smog, right? So it's actually covers because of the the stubble burning and there are multiple reasons let's i'm not going to go beyond whether the smog is only for stubble or whatever reasons but the primary reason which is has established is the stubble burning which is in punjab and haryana region okay because but and there is a startup which has actually gone ahead and started solving the problem of identifying the time area and the location looking at the satellite data the crop variety the kind of size of the and how do i solve the transportation problem of taking the stubble from place a to place b and solve this entire thing the startup has in the government has said i will be the user of this entire thing so government has gone and and we partnered with them we are solving that entire thing but the here the government is user consumer they want that entire solution because it's for good for everyone in that case is government and and it's very simple to work with government whenever you work on a impact or a or a purpose based i think the governments are extremely open it's only when it becomes a commercial engagement and everyone needs to do that right so it needs to go through certain procurement processes which are difficult in some cases which are actually necessary in most of the cases right so so i'm just saying that if you define a problem look at the purpose impact which actually is a solving a problem engaging with government engaging along with the government is a simple process and and happy to actually raise my hand and answer any of the questions around this in 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 offline also so that's that's i'm happy to do that I'm, i always believe that the government is usually an enabler and we we actually tend to make it more complicated than the government itself thank you anis thank you for all highlighting the role of uh, the government and thank you also santosh for kind of uh, talking about how government has a critical role to play uh, i'll continue with kind of probing our uh, panelists with questions but i'm also keeping an eye on the chat if there are any questions from the audience please uh, feel free to put them in the chat we have facilitators who can uh, help us facilitate those questions uh six minutes remaining maybe a quick question for kanika on uh, how communities play a critical role and you kind of leave that whole portfolio for unilever and how for businesses to get communities on board is so critical to achieve impact and meda for you maybe after that uh, how you're working with a, <coughs> with a community of artists and bringing artists on board which also is creating impact for the artists and how that is important for you to achieve what you want to achieve through sustainable uh, through art be a part so kanika so so communities are fundamental you know rahul for any business i mean communities where your suppliers are communities where your consumers are communities where your customers are communities where your employees are communities is is where your influencers are communities where your government people are you know i mean it's how do you define community community is not a stereotypical some village out there with you know some people these people have a very defined role for business and not engaging with uh, you know the community uh, automatically means that that business is doomed to perish it's as simple as that you know your community engagement has to be a very fundamental part of your strategy and um for us the work that we are driving is therefore i mean i started off by saying that for unilever sustainability or csr is not out there it's so integrated in the business that i am talking to uh, my supply chain team i am talking to my hr team i'm talking to my brand team to really see how all of this comes together and fundamentally for us even from a partnership lens uh, it becomes very very critical that we build the capacity of our partners and potentially have only those partners on board with us who view communities holistically or who have the capacity to view communities holistically uh otherwise you know it would be a, a case of complete mismatch of priorities when it comes to partnership for goals which is the sdg 17 that you highlighted um and for us i think the biggest strength that we have and i'm going to uh, sort of pick up from meedha's point on the role of individual i think the role of individual is the key because in the community each and every individual matters and 
I think at Prabhat, we pride ourselves in customizing solutions for the requirement of that village, of that block, of that district. You know, even when we're looking at things at a systemic lens, it has to funnel down to what is the need of the community bottom up and then co-create those solutions. And that's where, you know, every child will get impacted positively because um, we, we all, uh, you know, fundamentally I come back to the point of pregnancy, but it's so easy to think that every woman gets pregnant and, you know, women bear children, but every pregnancy is different. And in my Poshan Sati program, my Poshan Sathis, who are these outreach workers that we've trained, they go to every pregnant woman, understand her pain point and customize the requirements for her from advocacy to behavior change. So yeah, I think community, in a nutshell, community is the be all and end all for everything that businesses need to do. And uh, SDGs for children are very heavily nestled uh, or nested in, in that keyword of community. Lovely, very beautifully wrapped it up. Thank you, Kanika. And Meda, do you have any, we have three minutes left. Do you have any last reflections on what you've been hearing and uh, the work, the amazing work which you're doing? I really liked what Tanika said, that every pregnancy is different. So every need is different and every requirement is different for each individual. So when I set up Art Bia Bar, I'll say this really quickly. It was, it was also to help the artists because there's so much talent out there and people don't have a platform. People don't have a way to showcase their work. And some of them, it is their bread and butter. It is, it is their work. So if, if they can't help themselves, how are they going to help somebody else? So it was also a platform for artists to showcase their work and be able to sustain themselves and be able to give a small part of that even towards a cause. So they have that satisfaction that we, even with what we have, we have helped, we have created a difference. And also, that is something that is going to also impact the children who see it, that even if we don't have enough, what we can give in is, what we can do is join a community which gives us a standing where we can also be giving back to everyone else. So that was the whole, uh, the whole plan for Art Be Apart, is the whole plan for Art Be Apart. And I hope we can sort of achieve what we have planned. It's great. Thank you so much, Meida. Uh, amazing. Huh? Thank you, everyone, for sharing your insights, your experience, for bringing how your organizations think, really thought-provoking insights, and uh, really kind of substantiating, you know, what we've been discussing about SDGs, that investing in children and young people is critical to achieving a more equitable, just, and sustainable India for all. Thank you.